So let's start here with this, well, amazing view. But probably what you're wondering is why here? Why are we starting here? So let me straighten that camera up a little bit. Why here? Why here in particular? Well, for those of you who don't know, Francis Dunnery travels around the world playing house concerts. And last November, he played right here, like right on this spot in my, in my house, in my sunroom. And it was a, it was a mind blowing experience uh, for me. It was a wonderful night. And it was a wonderful night for the non Dunnery fans. That came along but I'm probably by talking about this I'm probably jumping ahead a little bit so let's let's head back down to the studio so we're back in the studio let me sit down and this is kind of cool because Francis sat right here he played my guitar for the house concert the one that I used in the video earlier in the week he sat here and we discussed his songwriting, which as a songwriter myself was just, you know, a, an amazing thing to be able to do. But let's rewind a little bit. So yeah, I have a lot of albums, CDs, some LPs, and also some digital downloads as well. But for me, it all began with Fearless. Now, technically it actually began before this album because my girlfriend at the time bought the second single, which was Homegrown. The first one being American Life in the Summertime, which was a massive hit in Australia. But Homegrown was slightly different. My girlfriend wasn't that taken with it. She didn't love it as much as American Life in the Summertime, but I liked it more in some ways. Because when I heard it, I'd been listening to bands like Kiss and Metallica and Queensryche and all these heavy bands and I couldn't write songs like them and I was I was searching for an answer and I heard Homegrown and I went I think I can write songs kind of like that So I went away and I literally started writing songs. I went out and bought the album and It was on loop forever, but it has been the absolute catalyst for me writing songs. The next two albums for me were Tall Blonde Helicopter and Let's Go Do What Happens. These are the next two studio albums and in my dreams got thrashed a million times and my son almost got called Jonah because of Jonah off Let's Go Do What Happens. So these, these albums almost had a very profound uh, and ongoing effect on my family but uh, he's called Saxon not Jonah so we move on. So it's fair to say I was listening to those albums a lot and writing a lot of songs, but they don't sound like Francis's songs, they just, they sound like me. But in 2001, I went on a bit of a buying spree. I got a couple of albums that I hadn't bought, older albums, and I bought the two albums that came out that year, which was Man and the live album Hometown, which is kind of tied into the house concerts thing. I'm In Love is on both these CDs and it's probably the live version that is closer to the version that I play. I bought so many albums, they sent me a second copy of the CD cover signed. But let's talk man. This album, without question, is my favorite album of all time. I listen to that album so, so much. Still enjoy it to this day. It is just a fantastic album. So then we come to this photo. Now this photo uh, is special for a number of reasons, but the amazing thing is it's taken on the 10th of the 11th, 2002. And the house concert here was on the 6th of the 11th, 2017. So very weird. And I woke up this morning to make this video and a year ago today, I shared this photograph on Facebook. That's weird stars align. But let's talk about this. How did this happen? Well, after buying all those CDs, I ch was chatting to John Webster, who was Francis's manager at the time. And he said, hopefully Francis will come to Australia at some point. But then in 2002, I went to Ireland and I was living in Ireland playing music. And Francis was playing a concert with Chris Dilford. So he was playing guitar for Chris Dilford. So he wasn't playing his own material in Oxford. Now my brother was living in Oxford a few years earlier, so I kind of knew Oxford a little bit. I'd actually gone there for my brother's wedding. 
I was living in my car in Ireland. I thought, I'm not missing this. John Webster said, I'll get you tickets to the concert and potentially you can meet Francis afterwards. So I drove over in my car. I even shouted myself to a b and I thought, I'm gonna just lash out tonight. No sleeping in the car after this experience. I'm gonna get a place to stay. So I got a place to stay, uh, went and met up with John before the concert, went to the concert, and after the concert, got to go backstage and got to meet Francis. Just mind-blowing, uh, inspiring, and there you go. But from then, 2002 to 2017, one, almost, what is that? 15 years I had waited to see Francis play his own material live and it got to happen in my lounge room. So let's talk about this, the vinyl copy of Man. Now, this is a pretty special album as well, signed now after the house concert, limited edition, number 73. And the man who put these together, Chris Topham, he came to the house concert with Francis. How bizarre is that? Full circle. So I got this, I've got these from the house concert, some more vinyl, some more CDs that I didn't have a hard copy of, I've now got. But I'm in love, let's talk about it, from these two albums. As I said, it's probably more the live version that I do, but pretty much from 2002 to now, I still play I'm in love at many of my gigs, love playing the song, have a lot, a lot of people who hear it and think it must be one of mine because they don't know it. It's a brilliant song. I mean, Francis has many brilliant songs, but I really enjoy, I really enjoy playing that song. Now, I normally break the songs down and explain a bit about them, but this is somebody else's song, so I wanted to explain kind of how I came to be playing this song. There will be links down below for obviously my social media accounts, but also so you can check out more stuff by Francis Dunnery. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I really do appreciate it. Check out I'm In Love here, my version. Here, you can check out a song from last week. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd love you to do that. I have nothing more to say. I'm Simon, AKA Soul Trader, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.